Hi, I'm Jim from the Wyoming State Museum, and this is the second of two videos that I put together to take a look at some artifacts that the Wyoming State Museum maintains that are related to the Battle of the Hundred and the Hand, or the Fetterman fight. I said that we would take a field trip out to the local Cheyenne City Cemetery to look at the grave of a person who was involved in the immediate aftermath of the battle. So we're out on our field trip here at the Lakeview City Cemetery here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, uh, to take a look at that, at that grave I was telling you about. Uh, in fourth grade, I did a report, one of my reports for Wyoming History Studies, was about a man by the name of John Portuguese Phillips. And he was, very, he was a fascinating individual to me, not only in and of himself, but also because of what he was connected to, and that was the Battle of the Hundred and the Hand. Later on in my life, I went out to uh, work here in the Cheyenne City Cemetery. That was my summertime job. And imagine my surprise when mowing the lawn one day, I came across the gravestone of John Portuguese Phillips. So let's get out, take a look at the gravestone, and I'll give you a little bit of, a, of history of John Portuguese Phillips and how he's related to the Battle of the Hundred and the Hand. John Portuguese Phillips was born in the Azores Islands in the Atlantic in 1832. And at at the age of 18, around 1850, he decided to leave the Azores and he boarded a whaling vessel and made his way to California to try his hand at finding gold there. Didn't have a lot of luck and so he uprooted his stakes from California and made his way to the Montana gold fields where he didn't have a lot of luck either. From there he made his way to Fort Phil Kearney and at Fort Phil Kearney in 1866 he found employment as a water carrier uh, for the military, hauling water up to the fort. Now, Phillips didn't take part in the Battle of uh, the Hundred and the Hand, but in the aftermath of the battle, Colonel Henry Carrington, the commander of the fort, was concerned that the Native Americans, after their victory against Fetterman, uh, he was concerned that they might actually mount an attack on the fort itself. And so he asked for two volunteers to ride all the way to Fort Laramie, a distance of about 220, 225 miles or so. Um, so he got two volunteers. One of them was a man by the name of Daniel Dixon. The other one was John Portuguese Phillips. They were both paid $300 to make the ride in sub-zero weather. Some say that the temperature dropped as low as 35 degrees below zero. Uh, and it was also snowstorm most of the way. And what transpired was an epic ride and by, anybody's, uh, by anybody's measure. Phillips and Dixon made their way first to Horseshoe Station, which is just south of Glendo Reservoir, modern day Glendo Reservoir in the town of Glendo. From there, they sent a telegraph off, uh, letting people know exactly what had happened. And then Phillips proceeded alone from there onto um, Fort Laramie to deliver the dispatches that Carrington had written uh, personally himself. He arrived at Fort Laramie on the, e the evening of Christmas Day, not Christmas Eve, but the day of Christmas. Uh, at about 10 o'clock in the evening, when he got there, it was again, he was covered in snow, and his horse had been ridden so hard that apparently the horse died within a few hours after arriving at Fort Laramie. It took a little while for um, soldiers to gather themselves up and send out a relief column, but they did it as quickly as they could. But there was really no need, not that, not that Carrington knew that, but there was really no need because the warriors had done what they set out to do, and by the time um, Phillips was beginning his ride, they were already making plans to, to move their families uh, out of the region of, of Fort Phil Kearney. Anyway, Phillips returned to the Fort Phil Kearney area and he set up a small cabin outside of the walls of Fort Phil Kearney. And he didn't stay there for too terribly long. He eventually made his way down to southeast Wyoming where he tried his hand at ranching. And he died in um, 1883. Here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, uh, the cause of death is listed as kidney problems. But let's take a look at the graves here of John Portuguese Phillips. So this is the grave of John Phillips, born in 18, um, like I say, in 1832, died on November 18th, 1883. He's only 51 years old. He's got quite a monument. And back in 1936, the Historical Landmark Commission of Wyoming attached this bronze plaque to Phillips' gravestone. And if you look over here, he's surrounded by his wife. And then, sadly, he's got the graves of three of his children here, too.
But by anybody's measure, as I said, uh, John Phillips made a heck of a ride. 230 odd miles in a snowstorm, and anybody who's been out in a snowstorm in Wyoming knows that just finding your way in that kind of a situation would have been, would have been quite the task. Anyway, that's our field trip for today, the second of our two videos regarding the Battle of the Hundred and the Hand. And in the future, I plan on taking some more field trips out here to the local Cheyenne City Cemetery. It's, uh, it actually has quite a few bits and pieces of Wyoming history uh, scattered amongst the, the memorials out here. And I think you'll find those of interest. But anyway, John Phillips, a uh, brave man who made one heck of a ride in the aftermath of the Battle of the Hundred and the Hand, December 21st, 1866. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please give me a call or send me an email. I'd be glad to talk to you about it. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching.